Today's goal is to understand the properties of similar triangles and use them to find lengths of missing sides in pairs of similar triangles. Now, we need to understand what a similar triangle is and we need to understand some of the notation that goes with it. Um, you probably looked at things called congruent back in elementary school. When two objects are exactly the same size and exactly the same shape, they're called congruent. But if they're the same shape and different sizes, they're said to be similar. So let's take this triangle that we have here. If we make another triangle just like it, except we're going to shrink it a little bit. Now I have two triangles that are exactly the same shape and different sizes. Now, what makes these two triangles exactly the same shape are the angles that are in them. And if you'll notice, I'm going to overlap them here. The angles are exactly the same, so I can stick the triangle down in there. Or I can stick it up here. Those two angles are the same. Those two angles are the same. So you can see that they have three of the same angles. I've just shrunk one and made it a different size. Now since I shrunk one, I shrunk all of the sides at the same rate, so their side lengths are also proportional. And those are the main properties of similar triangles. The angles are all the same, and the sides are all proportional. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute, how we actually state that. But first I want to get a naming convention out of the way. Um, if I call this triangle A, B, C, and I want to refer to the side lengths of triangle ABC. I'm going to call this side over here that's across from this capital A, I'm going to call the side little a. So we name the side lengths with small lowercase letters, and we name the angles with the upper case, case letters, and be sure that the uh, angle matches the side across from it as far as upper and lowercase, which means that this side over here is little this side over here is little b, and this side over here is little c. Now, for the smaller triangle, we're going to call it QRS, and I'm going to call this side this angle Q, this angle here R, and this angle here S, which means by the same naming convention, this side over here, which is across from capital Q, must be small q. This must be a little r, and this must be little s. Now, when we name similar triangles, we have to name them in the order of their equal angles. So in this case, tr if we call this triangle A, B, C, and we know that angle A is the same angle as angle Q, see we can overlap that, and I know that angle B down here is the same angle as angle R. And I know that angle C here is the same angle as angle S. Then that tells me that triangle ABC is similar to QRS. And the way we state that is like this. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle QRS and this little squiggly line in here called the tilde on a keyboard it's up beside the number one uh, we read it as is similar to. Now I'm just going to pull this out here just talking about the naming convention we name vertices of triangles with capital letters and the side opposite them is labeled with the same lowercase letter and it's important that they all go in the order of the equal angles. So what this says is since A, when we list it, when we name it like this, A comes first, and so the angle that corresponds to A, Q, has to come first when we name the second triangle. Uh, B comes first, or comes second in the middle, and the side that corresponds to B is R. So it comes second in this one. And then by process of elimination, the third angle is C. And the third angle that corresponds to it, if I line them up again, is S. So triangle ABC is similar to triangle QRS. Now, if I only tell you 
that triangle ABC is similar to triangle QRS, and I don't give you the picture, you get that same information from those letters. If I just tell you, I'll pull it down here, if I just tell you that triangle ABC is similar to triangle QRS, that gives us all of this information. It tells us that when triangle ABC is similar to QRS, this means that corresponding angles are equal. A is equal to Q, B is equal to R, and C is equal to S, as I've listed there. It also tells us that the corresponding sides are proportional. Remember, I just blew it up, and I blew up every side at the same rate so that the angles didn't change. So that means that little a, which was the side length, divided by little q, the side lengths across from a and q, is going, if I divide those, I get the same number as if I divide b by r and c by s. And just one more little tidbit, the areas of similar triangles are proportional to the squares of the corresponding sides. So if I know what the areas of the triangles are, and I divide them, that gives me the same number as if I divide uh, the squares of the corresponding sides. Now, let's use this information to actually do a question, and it might become more clear when we do that. Okay? So now just remember our naming convention, and that's what it says up here. Remember, when naming similar triangles, the order of the letters are important, very important. They must go in the order by the equal angles. So, for example, number one, it says, if triangle ABC is similar to triangle QRS, mark the equal angles and set up ratios to find the missing sides. So the first thing we're going to do is mark the equal angles. What this here tells us, this little bit of information right here, um, gives us all that important information right there. It tells us that angle A and angle Q have the same value. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select the star and I'm going to put star on angle A and I also have to put the star on angle Q because those two match. Now going back to this up here, this tells me that since B comes next and R comes next that B and R have to be the same value. So I'm going to take the little heart here and I'm going to put a little heart on B and I also have to put a little heart on R. And again, by process of elimination, that means that C has to be the same thing as S, but we can also look back up here and see that C and S are at the end, so that tells us that those two angles are equal as well. Now, if I want to find the um, missing sides, I'm going to have to set up proportion. And the first thing that I'm going to do is um, put them in the same order as their corresponding sides. So let's set up those ratios. If I take all of these numbers, and I'm going to use them as the numerators of our three-part ratio. So I'm going to take the 10, the 16, and the A, and those are our numerators. Each of their corresponding sides from the other triangle, from triangle QRS, are going to make up the denominators. And so I know over here, side 10 is across from the heart. So when I go over here across from the heart, I find R. So those are corresponding, and I'm going to turn that into a ratio. Now 16 in this triangle, if I look directly across the angle from 16, I get the check mark. So if I go to the other side, across from the check mark is a 5. So that 5 is going to go with the 16. Those two sides are corresponding. And then if I take a look at A in this triangle, A is across from the star. So across from the star in this triangle is an 8. And so it corresponds with the A. And we have another ratio. And all of these ratios are, in fact, equal. And if we set them as equal, once we have equal ratios, then we have a proportion. 
And now this is a three-part proportion. To solve a three-part proportion, we have to uh, separate them into two different two-part proportions. So I'm going to move this down just a little bit so that I can pull this over, which just explains what I did there. And that says, let's set up the ratios of the corresponding sides. Remember that corresponding sides are the ones across from the equal angles in each triangle. That's where marking the equal angles comes in handy. We're going to start by writing down all three sides of the bigger triangle. That's what I did as the numerators and then find their corresponding sides as the denominators. So this just little blip just reinforces what we just did here. Now we're going to separate it into two different parts, two different um, proportions. We need to break this into two separate proportions so we can solve for the missing values. Notice we have one ratio that is complete. This one, there's no variables in it. This here is a complete ratio, absolutely no variables. Uh, we're going to have to use that one twice. We need to use this complete ratio in order to set up and solve for the other two missing values. So I'm going to use this twice. So the first one I'm going to set up is going to be the 16 over 5 and the 10 over R. And if we just take a look down here, I've already got this set up. 16 over 5 equals 10 over R is one of the ratios that we set up here. Now I'm going to solve this one by cross multiplying. So I need to do um, multiply this way and multiply this way. So what I end up getting is this 16 times R gives us 16 R and the other way 5 times 10 gives us 5 times 10 and I know those two things have to be equal. Now I need to get the R completely by itself so I'm going to divide both sides by 16. When I divide this side by 16, I just get R. When I divide this side by 16, I get 50 divided by 16. And if I want to change that into a decimal, that's 3.125. Now we're going to repeat this over again using the 16 over 5 again. Except this time we're not going to use the 10 over R. We already used that. It's gone. We know what R is. We're going to use A over 8. So we have the 16 over 5 equals A over 8. This time I'm not going to cross multiply. I'm going to solve by uh, isolation. And if I solve by isolation, I'm going to multiply both sides by 8, like so. Multiply both sides by 8. And when I multiply this side by 8, uh, all I'm going to be left with is an A. And when I multiply this side by 8, I get a equals 128 over 5. That's 8 times 16 is 128 divided by 5. And that equals 25.6. So now we actually know what those two missing sides are. Uh, I could put them back up in this ratio if I need to. I know that A is 25.6 and I know that R is 3.125. Let's just put them back down here. And so we solve for the missing sides. Uh, go back up, take a look at what we just did, take a look, make sure you read through the stuff that I've done, and then uh, try a few practice problems yourself.